we all love our phones, right? But do you know that besides changing our lives, there's something else now that has been predicted about phones and there is actual proof? that smartphones have reduced crime in this world. That's going to be one of our stories, but I have an amazing lineup of other great stories. I've got this, the Vivo Z1 Pro, a high-performance gaming phone that has absolutely set headlines on fire because a high-performance, high-tech, high-spec gaming phone starts now at around 14,000 rupees. Then we've got this one. Another gaming phone, the Nubia, and this is also an incredible phone. I'm going to show you this one. I'm going to show you another one next week. We're going to do shootouts on gaming phones, so lots of excitement out there. Then we'll move to this, the Asus 6Z, because there's one part of this phone that we are calling it one of the best innovations of the year. It's about design. It's about their flip camera, so very interesting stuff there. And we have a shootout, the Motorola One Vision versus the Oppo F11 Pro. Let's get started. So much of ground to cover. Every coin has two faces. Smartphones, even though being bashed for overpowering us, may well be the night that saves us. How? We tell you. Vivo Z1 Pro comes fully loaded with performance and features. But is it the best budget phone for gamers? Find out. Confused between which phone to pick between the Moto One Vision and Oppo F11 Pro? We have the answer. And we review the much-talked-about gaming phone from Nubia, the Red Magic 3, and tell you if it's worth your money. Smartphones have ruined our lives. Smartphones are causing eye strain. Smartphones are keeping teens distracted. They don't study anymore. Time spent on smartphones and increased multifold. I can go on and on and on with the amount of smartphone bashing we all do. But there's a lot of good that has actually come out of using smartphones. And apart from the obvious ones, there's a new thing out there that says smartphones have changed the crime landscape completely. Shocking, right? That's our burning question today. It's come from a lot of you. How can a smartphone have impacted crime? Because there have been headlines that it's reduced crime all over the world. So let's get into this. Let me try and answer this. Well, we all know location tracking and tracking down the phone through an EMI number and generally mobile communication have made it easier to report illegal stuff happening. But I'm talking about something much, much larger, something that's happening automatically. The ownership of smartphones have displaced holding territory. So I'll give you an example. Gang wars and turfs have got de-escalated. Drug wars have got, become much, much lesser. How? Well, take how drugs were actually dealt with. Turf-based drug sales were initially fought for, often with incredible violence. People wanted to control areas. This is my territory. This is my city. This is my town. That's how it really happened, from corner to city. That's where the main violence was, to control turf. But once phone came into the picture, it broke the connection between the turf and selling drugs. The theory comes into play to account for the falling crime rate in the U.S. since 1990. And this is being cited as one of the many possible reasons. So there you have it. Some silver lining from the number of years we've used phones. Technology has certainly disrupted the crime and territory game, and now it's time to turn our focus to more amazing phones and technology. Our top story this week is the Vivo Z1 Pro, a phone that just got launched this week, and I can tell you a lot about this phone. So think about what you need in a gaming phone. You need a fantastic screen. You need an incredible processor. You want the phone to be able to run for a very, very long time. Therefore, battery life has to be absolutely incredible. Sometimes when you want to get off the phone, you need the camera to be amazing. So a triple camera at the back, a front camera that's 32 megapixel. It's got a punch hole so that the screen is big. Those are the things you look for, right? Imagine if you can get all of that and a whole lot more, including some multi-turbo modes that I've never seen before in a phone that costs about 14,000 rupees. This is where Vivo absolutely shocked the market with the Z1 Pro. Here's our review. After the Y series, Vivo is all set to launch its next, aimed at Gen Z and named like that as well. This is the Vivo Z1 Pro, which comes in at an aggressive 14,990 rupees and is part of Vivo's new Z series. It seems to have all the ingredients to be a good phone for its target generation. But does it deliver on all fronts? And in an industry where 48 megapixel lenses are being brought down to under 20k phones, what's the wow factor here? Let's take a good look at the phone. The Vivo Z1 Pro is a light phone, although it comes with a massive 6.53 inch screen. The phone can't be operated with one hand, but it's nice to grip and use. The back of the phone has a dual tone to it, but being polycarbonate, it does attract smudges easily. We got the Sonic Blue variant for review, which had nice hues of dark and light blue reflecting at the back. 
The front of the phone stands out with a punch hole design. This is one of the cheapest phones to get this design. It is an IPS screen with a full HD display. Watching videos on this is hassle free. We didn't find the camera getting in the way, although the resolution is pretty mediocre. One thing we all know the Gen Z is into, it's gaming. And so Vivo has amped up all its specifications in that direction. There is a specific multi-turbo mode for gaming and one can manage all game related settings in one place for each game. We played PUBG on this phone and it was very smooth. The game graphics were sharp and there was absolutely no lag. This can be attributed to the chip this phone comes with, with the new Snapdragon 712. This is the first phone with this chipset and it performed pretty well. We didn't find any lag. There is a massive 5000 mAh battery on this phone which is further optimized to last long thanks to the chip. The phone supports reverse charging as well. The Vivo Z1 Pro can last two days of use with ease. The price of the phone is pretty aggressive. It starts at 14,990 rupees for the 4GB RAM variant. We got the 6GB RAM, 64GB storage variant for review, which costs 16,990 rupees. There is also a 6GB RAM, 128GB storage variant, which is priced at rupees 17,990. There are some features which make this phone pretty handy to use. There is a Google Assistant button on the side, which we found very convenient. The phone runs on Fun Touch OS based on Android 9 Pie. The side button can be customized thanks to the OS and there is also a dark mode which reduces strain on the eyes. The Vivo Z1 Pro follows in on the triple camera trend. There is a 16 megapixel primary camera, an 8 megapixel wide angle lens and a 2 megapixel depth sensor. We took pictures of flowers and leaves and found the colors to not be too oversaturated. The edge detection is good on the phone and the depth is visible in portrait shots. The same can't be said about low light shots though, the object we shot was not even distinguishable. The front camera which is housed in the screen took some good selfies with a 32 megapixel lens. There is EIS for video and so the videos are not too shaky. We also came across the fun video mode which takes from apps like TikTok and users can add music and filters to their videos. The fingerprint scanner is fast, it's on the back of the phone. The Selguru verdict, the Vivo Z1 Pro is aggressively priced and challenges the under 15k segment with its performance. And so if you take your PUBG seriously and this is your budget, then look no further. And speaking of gaming phones, we're moving on to the next one, Nubia Red Magic 3. This is also a gaming phone and it's a very, very nice looking phone. Looks totally that it plays the part. If you look at the back, this is gaming. It screams gaming in every which way. It's got all nice kind of effects at the back. And it's about 35, 36,000 rupees for the phone. Lots of cool stuff in this phone too. Here then is our review. A pure gaming phone and the third one from Nubia. The Red Magic 3 is here and it has been priced at 35,999 rupees for the 8 GB RAM based variant. But with competition really heating up in the gaming phone space with phones like Xiaomi's Black Shark 2, and the Asus ROG around the corner, can the Red Magic cast its spell to be the only gaming phone we should be looking at? Let's find out. The Red Magic 3 has a nice and sleek gaming look. It looks a little angular but it feels solid to hold and use. The phone has red accents at the back with an LED strip running down the spine. Every bit of the design of this phone screams cool. The screen is a massive 6.65 inches. It's one of the biggest gaming phone screens we have come across. It is an AMOLED screen with a 90Hz refresh rate. On the battery front, there is a mammoth 5000 mAh battery. This is needed on a phone with a high refresh rate and a large screen, and the phone can scrape through two days of use. The Red Magic 3 is powered by the top-of-the-line Snapdragon 855 chipset, which is smooth and can handle any game thrown at it. But the proof of this pudding is definitely in its taste. So let's dig in. We downloaded PUBG, Asphalt 9 and a lighter Fruit Ninja. The games played really well and the screen is a breeze to hold horizontally in use. The phone did not heat up much because of the active fan cooling and there are vents on the side of this phone as well. Being a gaming phone, it is all fun and games but it does take its gaming pretty seriously. There are many game specific features on the phone like this red button on the side is to toggle the gaming mode on or off. This is the 4D intelligent vibration that the phone packs in which really adds to the gaming experience. There's also a dedicated game space in this phone where one can manage game notifications. The pogo pin connector is to connect the phone straight to a PC or a gaming dock. The Red Magic 3 runs on a stock Android 9 experience. It is basic and not too polished. Coming to the optics, the Red Magic 3 has a single 48 megapixel Sony IMX586 sensor. It does well in good light and this phone gave very good details and kept the colors real. There are many camera modes including one pretty mode which is basically the beauty mode in the phone. The low light shots we took did not turn out too great though. There is a 16 megapixel front camera which gave decent selfies in daylight. The highlight of the camera is the 8K video recording that it comes with, although it is in the beta stage as of now. 
We did take some videos, but because the frame rate is low, the video didn't look excessively rich like it should have. There is a fingerprint scanner at the back which does the job. And so that brings us to the verdict. Is this third time lucky for Nubia? Well, the Red Magic 3 has so much on its plate, all big specifications. But it does well on most fronts. It is a gaming beast, it's powerful and has a smooth gaming experience. The battery doesn't do as well as it should, but this phone is priced very well. And so if you are an avid gamer, then let the Red Magic 3 leave you spellbound. And now for our shootout. We haven't done a shootout for a while because there's been so much stuff that's been happening. that We've been trying to keep pace with just getting those reviews out and telling you. Good, not so good, absolutely terrible, buy, don't buy. But shootouts really make their point. So we're going to do an interesting shootout. One of the better phones that came out last week was the Motorola One Vision. And this phone versus the Oppo F11 Pro makes for a perfect shootout. Remember, as always, only one can win. When two phones come head to head, you know it's not all chalk and cheese. This time, we are putting together two phones that are quite similar with their camera specifications. This is the Motorola One Vision and the Oppo F11 Pro. But with a price difference of almost 5,000 rupees, which of the two is the better bet? Let's stack them up and find out. The Motorola One Vision is the newer phone between the two. Motorola has a sleek look, Oppo goes with a dual tone design on the phone. In terms of the display, the Motorola One Vision has a punch hole display, while the Oppo F11 Pro achieves a lovely full screen display with a pop up front camera. The display size is different in the two phones. The Motorola One has a smaller 6.3 inch Full HD Plus display, while the Oppo phone has a 6.5 inch Full HD Plus display. The Moto phone has brought an aspect ratio of 21 is to 9, which is cinema vision. This makes the phone really stand tall, and watching videos on this phone is sheer bliss. The chipset on the two is different with Motorola going with the Samsung Exynos 9609 and the Oppo F11 Pro sporting the MediaTek Helio P70. But the performance on the two is comparable and they come neck to neck here. How much will you have to shell out for one of these? Well, Motorola One Vision starts at 19,999 rupees for the 4GB RAM variant, while Oppo F11 Pro starts at 24,990 rupees for the 6GB RAM variant. Yes, the base RAMs on the two phones are different and Oppo does have an upper hand there. But as we said, the performance on the two phones is comparable. Motorola brings its latest in the under 20k segment, and with it, it brings a massive 48 megapixel camera to the segment as well. The rear camera on the two phones is exactly the same with a 48 megapixel and a 5 megapixel camera. The pictures have good color reproduction on both, but Motorola One Vision has an edge here since it brings optical image stabilization to this segment. In fact, Motorola brings a quad pixel technology to the camera. This uses 4 pixels to produce one, using all that data to oversample color and detail to produce a better result at quarter of the size. There's a separate night mode in the Motorola One Vision as well. When it comes to selfies, the Oppo F11 Pro has a 16 megapixel pop up camera, while the Moto One Vision goes with a higher 25 megapixel punch hole camera. Oppo's camera is located in the center and gives clear selfies, but we like the Motorola in display camera form factor, which comes across as a slightly more reliable than a pop up. Which of these phones will go the extra mile with the juice they pack in? Well, the Oppo F11 Pro has a larger 4000 mAh battery, while the Motorola has a 3500 mAh battery. Another difference in the two phones is the OS they run on. Moto runs on the Android 1 program, while the F11 Pro runs on Color OS 6, based on Android 9. All in all, the Oppo F11 Pro is a good-looking phone which does well on the battery and the performance front. But at around 5,000 rupees cheaper, the Motorola One Vision brings a lot more to the table, including a stunning 21 is to 9 display, optical image stabilization, and a lot of new tech in its camera. It's a reliable phone and makes for a good choice when compared to the Oppo F11 Pro. Let's take a quick break right now on the show. When we come back, lots more on Selguru. Let's move on now to something which we are declaring as one of the better innovations of the year. This is the flip camera on the Asus 6Z. So from the design, the materials used, the way it's worked, the science and the technology behind it, it is one of the better innovations of the year. I'm going to show you a closer look at the design behind it and the way it works and then of course we'll talk to the global chairperson. We might be a little more than halfway through the year, but there is one innovation that could very well be termed the innovation of the year. And that is the flipping camera that ASUS has got on its relatively new 6C phone. The camera houses a 48 megapixel and a 13 megapixel lens and it turns and flips to the front once the selfie camera is turned on. 
The camera structure has a stepper motor which can be stopped at any angle and allows for free angle shooting. The gearbox in the camera has around 13 gears and the flipping camera also has all the sensors fitted in. It truly is a unique creation and design. ASUS Engineering, I think, uh, try all our best to achieve the most optimal design. So if you allow me to talk, talk a little bit, sure. in Stanford they call this design thinking. It's a kind of parameter driven science of design. So different kind of parameter. So that's why finally when we want to solve the punch hole, to solve you know, the, the no, no, no notch, right? And then we, we figure out what's the best way for the, you know, the flip camera. And then we found out that there are a lot of good application. You can use the auto, including the selfie, the, the panorama, many other you know, ang difficult angle. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we also think about what's the most optimal parameters. When we think about this kind of flip camera, right? We have a lot of advantage. But normally, you know, the, the parameter, you cannot only drive one single parameter. I want to be the thinnest. This is easy way. Okay. Yeah. So how to optimize that? Then in, in that case, if we choose this, then I think then we have to make very good ID. Okay, to make it still looks like pretty good. ASU started designing the 6Z right after the 5Z was launched. They went through multiple prototypes to achieve a full screen display. Right from a pop-up to slide out camera, they came up with many options. But finally, it was this innovative flip one which made the cut. The camera housing is made of liquid metal which is said to be much stronger than stainless steel. This alloy is strong and tenacious and yet very flexible. So it's a good fit for the flipping beauty. But how did the ASUS chairman react when he first heard of this idea from his team? My first reaction is, it's quite ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> ridiculously good or ridiculously bad? <laughs> no, no, no. Ridiculous. Uh, I think the good thing is, you know, uh, 10 years when we internalize the practice of design thinking, at least, you know, uh, the whole ASUS, no matter uh, which depart department, including the, the, the top executive, right, right, or already trained, okay, even you feel ridiculous, okay, <laughs> you cannot jump to the conclusion. Okay, so I think immediately we got a lot of you know internal discussion, and then finally find out that you know it's not that simple, <laughs> right? Yeah, because when you 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 go to that direction, you got some advantage of that, right? Then you you actually you have to discard some, right? So finally, I still believe that you know eventually you found out that the whole parameter actually is right. The rest of the design of the ASUS 6Z is as incredible. They have managed to fit in a massive 5000 mAh battery, a Snapdragon 855 chipset and a triple SIM slot all into the body of the phone. ASUS achieved this by letting go of an in-display fingerprint scanner and the fastest charging. Although they still manage an 18 watts quick charge, in addition they employed a two-piece PCB design with some space in the middle for extra insulation in between. So a lot of thought, a lot of research and a lot of new innovation later. Lo and behold, the marvellous ASUS 6Z. That then was the Cell Guru Show for this week. Next week, we've got the LG W30. Yes, LG is back and this time they're doing it right. Their marketing never works, but they put it online and it actually worked. The W10 and the W30 actually got sold out. We'll tell you why when we go deep into the W30. Then we have a really good gaming phone shootout. Take a look at it next week. I'll see you then.